prepaid expenses, what could be simpler? This seemingly straightforward concept is not so clear when it comes to gap accounting and the things that can go wrong. Understanding prepaid expenses, how they need to be accounted for, and potential pitfalls are critical for those who work in, manage, or have responsibility for the accounts payable and or accounting function. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss several issues related to prepaid expenses that few take into account and one that could create a huge problem if ignored. Let's get started. To make sure we're all on the same page, let's start with a simple explanation of what prepaid expenses are before discussing the potential pitfalls or problems. Prepaid expenses is an accounting term that deals with the differences in timing between paying for something and using it. Now, let's start with a simple personal example, as I believe this makes the concept easier to understand. You probably have had experience with one of these, although when it happened, I doubt you thought of it as a prepaid expense. Have you ever purchased an airline ticket? You probably put it on your credit card and may even have had to pay the credit card bill before you put one foot on the airplane. Or back in the day, perhaps you purchased a prepaid phone card for say a child going away to school or maybe on a trip. Of course, this was before cell phones were commonplace. And speaking of children, if you're paying school fees or college tuition, that is another example of a prepaid expense. And one last example, if you live in a big city and have had and have a Metro card, you may have preloaded the card with cash before using it. One such example of that might be the New York City MTA Metro card, but there are plenty of others. Basically, anytime you give cash, i.e pay before using the services or goods, you have in effect prepaid expenses. Now let's move into the business world, which is probably why you are watching or listening to this. Let's say you or one of the company's employees has a subscription to a financial newspaper, let's say the Wall Street Journal. And by the way, this could also be a personal example, but you probably figured that out. Okay, and let's say your subscription period runs from November 1st, 2023 to October 31st, 2024, one year. In my hypothetical example, the cost is going to be $150 and you're going to pay the whole thing up front, perhaps because you get a little better price if you do that. Would it give a realistic view of the financial health of your organization if you recorded the full amount as a cost on the income statement in the year in which you receive and pay that invoice rather than spreading the cost over the entire period when you'll be receiving the papers? Probably not. And keep this in mind when we come to some of the issues. Remember, your newspaper will be received over the next 12 months. One of the basics of accounting and of GAAP, G-A-A-P, is the matching principle. Expenses should be recorded during the period in which they are incurred. Enter prepaid expenses. This is where prepaid expenses become a factor and how they are reflected on ba in your balance sheet reporting. Basically, what you are doing when you record the item as a prepaid expense is record the right to receive future services that have been paid for but not consumed. Very quickly, let's take a look at how the journal entries for prepaid expenses would go. Step number one, record the full invoice by crediting cash, because don't forget money's leaving, and debiting prepaid expenses. Step number two, figure out how to allocate the total amount to the periods in which the service is delivered. The service is delivered when newspapers are received. The hypothetical $150 per annum equates to $12.50 per month. Since our subscription started on November 1st, that will mean we'll have two months or a total of $25 of the $150 attributable to 2023 and the rest, $125, attributable to, to 2024. Step number three, transfer $25 from assets on the balance sheets to cost or expense on the income statement by crediting prepaid expenses on the balance sheet, then debit subscription expenses in the income statement. At the end of 2023, the remaining balance in the prepaid expense account on the balance sheet represents 10 months of newspaper subscription fees or $125. 
the $150 less the $25. Step four, don't forget at the end of the subscription period to make sure that the entire amount of the original invoice has been expensed. Once you have a basic understanding of how prepaid expenses operate, there are some issues surrounding it that you need to be aware of. For as you know, few things in life and definitely accounting go exactly as they are planned. Here are a few of the potential issues related to expenses. And by the way, if I leave any out, please feel free to point them out in the comments so we can all benefit. For without fail, we all have slightly different experiences and therefore slightly different issues. Okay, issue number one, tracking and monitoring. As alluded to above, you need to keep track of the activity related to prepaid expenses, making sure funds are transferred from prepaid expenses to cost. To give you a very, very simple example, following through on our subscription example, let's say the employee re leave, receiving the subscription leaves your organization. When this happens, depending on the arrangement, they may take the subscription with them as the company has already paid the bill for the subscription, or two, the subscription may be transferred to another employee. If it is the latter, check the department code where the expense is being allocated because that might change, or not, or three, if someone takes the initiative and the provider allows it, the subscription may be terminated and a refund given. In that case, you'll need to make the necessary adjustments to your accounting record. Issue number two, changes to planned use or obsolescence of the material audit will Either of those issues will both impact the accounting related to prepaid expenses. These issues obviously cannot be explained with the subscription example, but they will all require adjustments to your planned prepaid expense routine. The obsolescence issue is a real concern if you're using a lot of new technology where changes, as we are all painfully aware, happen at lightning speed. What else? Does this give you an, an idea where issue number three might be? Issue number three, incorrect estimates in the beginning may have resulted in prepaying for too much and adjustments will be need to be made. Clearly, these adjustments will be made only after consultation with responsible parties for the use of the materials and after a negotiation has been made with the supplier as to the resolution of the matter. If they agree to a refund, you will need to treat it that way. If, however, no refunds are coming, a decision will need to be made as to what to do with the materials, obviously, and where the costs are to be allocated, for they can't stay in prepaid expenses forever just because you didn't use it. Prepaid expenses are just one accounting concept that those working in, managing, or have responsibility for the accounts payable function need to understand if they want to do well in their current position and be considered to have management potential. There are a few others. That's why we recently put together a short video on some of the other basic accounting concepts you need to understand. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching this on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck.